Hey guys, um, Sleepy Reader here, Damien. Uh, I don't know, I always say that, or I say that a lot, um, but there's always the chance that new people are watching the video. Um, anyway, uh, this is going to be a haul video. I, I've frequently done um, Wednesday pickups, new comic book day hauls, but I haven't done much in the way of other hauls in quite a while. This will just be a short one, mostly books. Um, well, trick, you know, graphic novels and books. Um, I just felt like sh sharing with you some things I've gotten lately. Um, some just today and some two weekends ago when I was going for a walk around my neighborhood, which I used to do all the time before we had kid, uh, a kid. Sounds like someone having an accident outside or a near accident. Um, anyway, I used to go on a nice day, go for a long walk through my neighborhood. I do live in this very um, urban neighborhoody kind of area with lots of shops and everything. And there's a number of bookstores, not as many as there used to be. But there's this one quirky one in this old triangular shaped building. And it's almost never open and it's entirely old books a lot of them supposedly collectible books um you know it might be the place you go looking for an old um you know an old wizard of oz book or something like that um in fact i wish i'd now that i think of it i wish i'd look for that when i was there i just wandered in uh mostly going for a walk but of course found stuff to buy plus it was one of those situations where the shop owners trying to chat you up and then you feel a little more guilty for not buying anything. But uh, luckily, there's stuff I would have wanted anyway. Um, the thing that I'm most excited for... Wait, and you know what? I thought it was in really good condition, but now I'm... I can't even tell if there's... So this is a... I'm trying to tell if there's tape on it. This is a Galaxy science fiction magazine from 1951. This is something that I sort of unconsciously collect. I pick them up things like this when I randomly see them. Um, in uh, the 1940s, Astounding Magazine was the leading science fiction magazine, and in the 1950s, Astounding kind of established the Isaac Asimov, Robert Heinlein kind of solid, hard science fiction. And then in the 50s, Galaxy Magazine brought in a slightly more literary approach I mean, I wouldn't put down Astounding Magazine, so I don't like calling one literary one the other, but um, maybe more stylistic approach, but also uh, a stronger emphasis on satire and black humor and stuff. And this looks almost like a satirical cover. I don't know what it illustrates. I haven't really looked closely at this. Um, there's a Fritz Leiber story in here and a... Um, William Ten story, so those are both still famous writers. It is in beautiful condition. I guess I can't quite tell if there's a piece of tape there. I guess there isn't. It's kind of shiny there. Um, but so it's all in entirely perfect condition. But these bookstores, in some previous bookstore, they like to stamp their names in the books, <laughs> and they like to put the price with stickers. So other than that, it's almost like, a, you know, I don't know how, how to grade it, but it it's feels almost unread. The pages are a bit yellowed, but the outside, it has no creases, nothing. Anyway, uh, and I'm not that stuck up on condition. I just kind of like the covers, and I like finding interesting stories by authors who may now become, now be well known. Um, another thing I bought, I've always meant to get Andre Norton books. Um, she, and it's a she, even though she uses the pen name Andre, is one of the gaps in my fairly extensive science fiction reading. So I haven't read almost anything by her, but she was kind of marketed as young adult, but considered now to be the author of a lot of classic books. Uh, particularly centered around Witch World. I got two of her books, and this one's one of the Witch World books. Um, but this is the one that I was kind of excited by. 
um, it looks to me like a cover by Leo, Leo and Diane Dillon, who are, to my mind, some of the most interesting uh, artist illustrators of both science fiction and children's books and fantasy books and stuff. There was a period where they were doing the Narnia covers. Um, and if you read children's picture books, uh, you'll see lots of Leo and Diane Dillon. I think Leo died recently. It's also interesting, the idea of a couple working on art together. Um, it's kind of heartwarming in a way. They've been illustrating together for 40 or 50 years before Leo died. Um, so I don't know what this book's about, but I love the title, Iron Cage, and I love the, um, I love the cover. So I grabbed it. And I knew which world was her most famous stuff, so I thought, you know, while I'm throwing him some business, I'll grab a, a Witch World book. This one's not as in good shape. Like the other, I think... Oh, no, this one does not have a stamp in it, so that's nice. Um, this is more like your regularly worn kind of paperback. So that's what I bought at that store. And then... Some of you may have heard of Powell's City of Books. I guess it's not the biggest store in North America, but it must be one of the biggest. It it uh, literally covers an entire city block, and it's three or four stories high. But it also has satellite bookstores. There's a street near where I live called Hawthorne, which has a lot of groovy shops on it. And one of the is Powell's on Hawthorne, which is very tiny compared to the main Powell's. But compared to most bookstores, it's still pretty big. Um, and they had a bunch, a lot of remaindered books. And so I grabbed two that were comic book related. This is volume two of the Yale University Press anthology of graphic fiction, cartoons, and true stories. Although I don't think there's many true stories in here. But it, um, it's an interesting mix of mostly kind of underground and zenish kind of comics and a few other things. Um, and I think what it really represents is that, um, that Art Spiegelman take on what good comics are. Um, if I'm... You know, he won the Pulitzer Prize, and this is Yale University, and they kind of, and and he now he and his wife now work for the New Yorker magazine, and so these highbrow people, I think, kind of look to him. This is my guess from looking through this. Um, look to him for for what should be in comics, and I certainly like this stuff, but I kind of wish there was more variety, given that it's kind of a anthology from Yale University so it's supposed to represent the art form that we love to maybe a, a wider world uh, uh, or a more academic world so I think most of it is is things you would find either that were published in underground comics or that you would find that people who prefer underground comics would like um, there's one particular oddity, which is a reprint of this Golden Age comic called The Super Wizard Stardust. And it's hilariously bizarre and silly, um, where the bad guys make gravity start working. So they make, it stop, make gravity stop working by stopping the Earth from spinning. And then everyone on Earth shoots out into outer space. Um, but they just sort of fall asleep while they're in outer space, and our hero rescues them. And our bad guys, uh, this bearded guy and his henchmen, their plan is just to get rid of everybody in space except them, everybody on Earth except themselves, so that they can rule the planet by themselves and be rich. <laughs> but um, I would have liked more like this. I think the reason why they included this one is this sort of quirky artist from this period. Um, Fletcher Hanks is one that the kind of intellectual underground comic book artists uh, look back on fondly. Um, so I don't know. There's some R. Crumb, of course. I think it's Harvey. Is that a Harvey Pekar R. Crumb? 
Harvey P. Carr and R. Crumb. So it's totally full of good stuff, and it like cost me four dollars for this hardback. I don't know why it was remaindered for so little. Um, so I'm very glad to have it. Just just that's my little complaint that that they could have drawn a little more broadly. It's it's uh, for a certain group of people and what they like in comics. It's sort of the cliche almost of what they like. But lots of stuff in here that I haven't read and just nice to have it in this edition for so little money. <laughs> uh, and then also on the remainder table was this thing called Super Graphic. I'd never seen or heard of this. Uh, the visual guide to the comic book universe. It's just full of infographics about comics. Um, and it was quite a bit more expensive than that hardback Yale University one. Um, but I still was happy to buy it for the remainder price, which was about half of the half of the official price. Um, maybe I could get it just as cheaply on Amazon. I don't know. But I was, you know, I was on my walk browsing, exciting to find this a book I never heard of. Um, some of the infographics aren't really that useful, but they're kind of cute. Like reasons to like Cyclops, and it's done just to look like Cyclops' head, right? And uh, this one is, what makes Nick Fury so intimidating? And it just looks like Nick Fury. Um, you can't look at it quickly and tell you know, what it's about, but it's just, it's cute. And uh, so I've marked off some that I thought would be fun to show you, assuming that not everybody has seen this before. Here's a chart of how long characters stay dead. That's, that seems actually useful and readable. Um, let's see. Oh, this is another one I found useful and I just thought it was cool is Tintin's Travels from each of his books, um, including the one where he goes oops, into outer space. Mapping the relationships of the new gods. This one's a little harder to read and harder to follow through. And I kind of wish there was even more new gods on here. But anyway, it's fun. I would never have thought I would ever find a chart mapping the relationship with the new gods. Okay, here's a crazy one. And I think they pretty obviously don't mean you to really be able to read this. But just to see how crazy things are. The many affiliations of the Mar Marvel Universe. So... You got characters, oops, characters on this side and teams they've been on on this side. And it would be nearly impossible to follow all those lines. So it just illustrates the point of the endless mixing and matching of characters on different teams. <coughs> Excuse me, kind of recovering from a cold here. Okay, this one kind of irked me a little. Who reads DC Comics, supposedly based on a poll taken right after the New 52 started? And um, the big, the sort of center of this graph is 25 years old, <coughs> with a large, sorry, I'm not, a large portion of the readership below 25. I was a bit surprised by that. I don't know if it's accurate. And, you know, the numbers once you get past 40 being pretty low and being a reader of comics in my 50s, I was a bit surprised, especially because I see, I feel like 35 is maybe the average age in my comic book stores that I go to, maybe even higher. Um, so anyway, um, but then this one here, the income of the people who read DC Comics, 50% of in-store customers had incomes less than 60,000. Um, they seem to focus on the less than 60,000, like that's a shock. I'm shocked that half of the people buying comics in-store for DC Comics uh, make over 60,000. I don't know, maybe I'm living <laughs> I'm, I'm, I need to uh, get higher paid work. So all, all, all these uh, people 
25 and up are making more than 60,000. All of you guys, half of you guys out there are making more than 60,000 a year. The um, I looked it up. The uh, the average income is 44,000 in the US. So uh, comic book readers on the upside. Okay, this one is crazy. The politics of good and evil. And it has a chart which is authoritarian to libertarian and conservative to liberal. And I don't think I agree with the placement of any of the characters on here, except maybe Darkseid, who is at the far corner of authoritarian and conservative. Um, but some weird ones are like... Uh, Let's see. I mean, they all seem a little off to me, but um, Wolverine is close to the center, but a little more on the libertarian side. I would think he'd be pretty far on the libertarian side, and I don't know if he's liberal or conservative. It's kind of hard to to match up the liberal and conservative. This was just somebody's judgment, of course. There's no no right or wrong there. Um, Hawkman is very far towards the conservative and libertarian side. Sinestro, <laughs> very far towards the libertarian and conservative. Dr. Doom is a bit less conservative than Lex Luthor. Um, in fact, Dr. Doom is equally as conservative as Wonder Woman. <laughs> but Wonder Woman is a little closer to the libertarian side, but not very. She's pretty deep. You know, well, I don't know. It's fun to think about. I'd love to get together with a group of people and make our own chart like that. Um, Scrooge McDuck's family tree. Now that's pretty rich and complicated. I'm going to have to look at that more thoroughly. And the last one that I have... Oh, superheroes and their primary colors. And then what's fun about that is the next page is... Supervillains and their secondary colors. <laughs> so it it's another it's more of a fun idea. It's not like a graph you can look at really quickly and get too much information out of. Um, oh, and this one, the a Venn diagram of superhero comic tropes, with the three things in the diagram being underwear on the outside, tragically dead parents, and a cape. And uh, right in the middle with all three of those things is Magneto, Superman, Dr. Fate, Robin, Batman, and the Martian Manhunter. Of course, sadly, the underwear on the outside is, is going away. Maybe it's coming back. I hope it comes back. So I, if you stumble across this book and you can get it for an okay price, I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's not very deep. <laughs> Okay, so those are the books I bought walking around, stuff I've gotten in the mail. I've already gone on much longer than I thought I would. Jeez, 18 minutes. Oh, well, fun chatting, right? Uh, I've become really interested in color in comics, and I think this book was probably done before coloring reached its peak that it's at now. Um, maybe more during the period where they overdid all the, um, what do you call it? the shading where they overshaded characters too much but anyway a uh, book put up by the hi-fi you know sometimes you see in the credits hi-fi is the coloring well it's a company run by a husband and wife with other people working for them i guess and so they put out this series of books and this was the first one my library didn't have it so i decided to order it lightly used but it's not it seems completely unused and the cds in it so the question is, can I get a hold of Photoshop? Uh, not too expensively, just to play around with it. Um, I gotta look into that, because I just wanna play around with color and understand how to do it more the way I did as a kid with drawing, um, the way I still do with writing when I have time. Time is the problem, but still I hope, because I'm really fascinated by color these days. Okay, and then just today I received in the mail in stock trades order. There's the nice um, foam they wrap it in, and all the books were wrapped together inside this plastic bag. And then 
three of the four books were also wrapped in their own plastic. Like um, this one, Tom Strong. The odd thing is uh, I ordered the two volumes of Seven Soldiers of Victory in this oversized uh, editions. And one is wrapped in plastic and one is not. So I don't know what that's about. So yeah, I a long time ago when these came out, I kind of got the uh, got the issues at random. Uh, read most of the series, but I think I missed issues here and there, and I don't think I own any of the copies. Um, so I'm excited. I love uh, owning hardbacks that are quality hardbacks. This looks pretty good. I always look at the binding to make sure it's a sewn binding um, and it looks that way here. Um, I like to get things a little oversized, even a little more oversized than this would have been nice. But yeah, and I'm kind of back on a Grant Morrison kick as you might have seen in various videos and projects lately. So uh, psyched to dig into those. And then I got a um, Gilbert Hernandez hardback um called sloth i don't know a lot about it but you know i like to try more gilbert hernandez you don't run into him at the comic book shop so much anymore by accident now that they don't do love and rockets as a as a regular magazine um so i'm curious as to what sloth is like it's probably black and white i'm assuming Oh, and it's the kind where the cover's printed right onto the hardback. I really like that a lot. Um, okay binding. It's from Vertigo. And yes, of course, it is black and white. I did enjoy seeing his art in color in the most recent Sensational Wonder Woman. Sensational Comics featuring Wonder Woman. Although the story itself that he wrote wasn't that great. But, um, yeah, so psyched about that. And then this even more oversized edition of the first 12 issues of Tom Strong, I believe. Yeah, just a touch more oversized than the Seven Soldiers of Victory. And compare a regular comic book to them. It's funny, all these different variations on oversidedness we get. Let's see. Here's my oversized planetary that I still have out. I guess it's about the same proportions is it? as the um, yeah. Anyway. Getting really trivial here. I bought every issue of Tom Strong that Alan Moore wrote, but I um, gave away some of them and I still have a lot of them, but I just realized I'm really going to enjoy having them in a hardbound book and in an oversized condition. Tom Strong certainly not the greatest thing that uh, Alan Moore ever did, but uh, he just meant it to be fun, and it is a lot of fun, and it's inventive and imaginative, and every issue I think had the main part of the story by Chris Sprouse, and then a extra story by a guest artist. So, um, so you get interesting variety of art there. Um, so, got some Alan Moore and some Grant Morrison. So there you have it. A overly long haul about just a few items. Um, but I enjoyed chatting with you or chatting with myself. I'm just chatting with myself all the time. This narcissistic video thing. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.